especially for the suffragettes, women's rights have been a hotly debated topic. Things did change after that. Article 5 of the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 1979 and ratified by Nigeria in 1984, encourages nations to modify the social and cultural patterns of conduct of men and women with the view to eliminate inferiority and superiority of either sexes or stereotype roles of men and women. Still, women's access to public and political life still wanes in comparison to men. Waje, a singer, songwriter, United Nations One and Purple Ambassador, has become sort of an icon for many women in the entertainment business in Africa. Even now, her voice has become a pivotal tool in championing women's rights in Africa. More importantly, she speaks against the singularly unifying problem of gender equality opportunity. Hello, welcome to another episode of The Heart of the Matter. My name is Omilola Oshikoya and today we're talking about gender equality, redefining opportunity. We have with us a singer and songwriter who is also in United Nations One and Purple Ambassador. Her name is Waje. Thank you very much, Waje, for coming on the Thank show. You for having me. It's a pleasure to interview you. <laughs> Thank you um, very much. Okay, so I'm going to start with one of your quotes which says, the most important and often misunderstood I say misunderstood again, concept and the narratives for gender equality is opportunity. What do you mean by this? Why, why did you say this? Um, that's because, you know, I've had, well, I've worked with a lot of organizations and I've had conversations with, you know, the average people, you know, that we meet your day-to-day -day people. And then every time um, this topic about gender equality is, addressed a lot of people think that you're coming from the um gender side with regards to submission in homes what a man can do a woman can do better mm -hmm. and all of that but really from my own point of view i've always believed that one of the reasons why people are not able to achieve the things that they want is um knowledge most of the time okay. because we move around ignorantly and if we understand the concept of equality, understanding that the same opportunity that is available to the man should be made available to the woman or the girl child. That, that was actually what I was talking about, that most times the problem we have is opportunity. Mm. So did you, ex but, I mean, you're in the music industry, did you yeah. experience this going into the music industry and is there a lack of opportunities for women in the entertainment music well, industry? Um, I, I wouldn't say I experienced it. Definitely, I know that the industry that I am is a male-dominated industry, you know, and there are challenges, you know, for women as well in the industry. But I wouldn't say something that I experienced. I, I, I said that because of some of the experiences that I've seen go on in people's, or that's other people, you know, and, and yeah, so it, it wasn't never really my experience. But. Wow, okay, so let's talk about access, because it's a big factor. Mm -hmm. Access to education, access to training, especially women in rural areas. Do you think access is a big factor? And what, what are the, some of the things that you're doing to change this, to change the conversation? Access is definitely a big factor, because, um, well, it's two things, okay. access and knowledge. Let me tell you why. Um, I, when I became a popular ambassador last year, okay. and one of the um, conferences we went for in Abuja, um, a lady, she's a politician, I can't re really remember her name now, but she said something that, w that was sort of, that gave me insight to how we as women address these issues. She was like, okay, there are times when these opportunities are there, but mm. nobody to handle it. Mm. You understand that there are times let's take agriculture for example the agricultural sector now uh, you know that there there's some sort of um funding now that cbn has made available for women yes. in business okay mm -hmm. but half the time women these women who these things are made for don't even know mm. so they don't they don't even use that opportunity and if you don't know about the access how do you have that access? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's really not just, it's... it's so ignorance the, yeah, plays... A, a, it plays a huge role. So how do we do this then? How do we... Um, so we take, we need to do more awareness campaigns or... Well, yes. Outside awareness campaigns, you know how in a church you have cell groups? Mm -hmm. You understand? I, f I feel for organizations, 
these are the things that we really need to concentrate on. How to reach the lowest, you understand? Because that way, these women now know that these are the opportunities that they have. Mm. So even if it's, I know of a friend who just started something to help people um, fund their business with just 50K. Because I'm one of the sponsors for that okay. um, for, for the whole con the, yeah for that package you know okay. what I mean so just fund your business for 50k, 50K and but it here goes a long way. it goes it, and the thing is there are people that can't afford that 50k hmm. so we're not only talking about people that have you know access to TVs that can get information or buy newspapers and you know, how do we now reach people who don't have this access that small organizations small groups so it's there's a chain hmm. and with that chain the people who need this help can know that okay this help is available to us hmm. Okay, what about um, fair pay? So, it's known that men often earn more than yeah. women or men mm -hmm. are offered more than women. So, if you're bidding for a contract or, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, even in different industries, you find that men will be offered more. And this affects children, most mm -hmm. especially also children from single parents mm -hmm. because of financial instability. How, why is this and how can we change this? I, th I think it has a lot to do with our misconception of, you know, culture and religion, mm. <laughs> honestly. I was reading some, there's a book I'm reading right now, it's called um, 12 Extraordinary Women. Mm, okay. And it was talking about Eve. And he said something, he said, you know, like, uh, one of the reasons why I went and got the book anyways to read it was because I posted something on Instagram and everybody went and had a go at me because they didn't share my views okay. and I totally understand that because you know it's every time there's a topic about gender equality you know noses and eyebrows raise, raise. up yeah mm. so I, I get feminist they've come again <laughs> and they've come again I get it but um, if people don't if people understand that it's you're concentrating on the job and not the person doing the job mm then you understand that that person deserves what they make. Mm. So you're not going to say, oh, uh, Waje, she's a fantastic artist. David, oh, he's great. Mm. But because he's Waje, does she really need the money? She's a woman. Mm. Or, you know, if I'm doing the, the same job, give, because now the same sun where they shine on the man, now they shine on the woman. Mm. Now the same rain where they fall on, <laughs> now they fall on me. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, okay, because I'm, you know, I'm an investment banker or I work, I'm just a regular average person, but I'm a woman. So I, I earn 30% mm -hmm. less of what a man who, a man will earn, who does the same mm -hmm. job description as I do. Mm -hmm. And I really don't know how we are going to change that because mm -hmm. I just think it's our misconception of religion mm -hmm. and our culture. And if we understand that everybody deserves what they make, regardless mm. of who they are, mm. then I, I guess that would be a start. That's and great. policies should be put in place as well. Okay. We should hold policy makers to, you know. To, to help women in yeah, that regard. in that regard, yeah. Okay, we need to go on a quick break. Okay. We'll continue after the break. No problem. Thank you. Viewers, stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to the Heart of the Matter. We still have with us Raje, and we're talking about gender equality. Okay, so I was watching this, um, doing my research before the show. I watched this uh, YouTube channel, yeah, and YouTube video, and there was a lecturer who talks a lot on gender equality, mm -hmm. and he said um, usually he goes as a guest speaker to mm -hmm. a fellow lecturer mm -hmm. who also talks about gender equality, mm -hmm. and this particular time he had to go as a guest speaker when she was speaking and. Everybody sat up when he got in there and they were really willing to listen to him because it was a man mm -hmm. So the, some of the students were like finally we have some objectivity So do you think it would help if more men talk about these issues? Yes, I totally agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so because you know naturally men are seen as leaders They are leaders anyways, so the more they talk about it the more other men would understand because men don't most men some men don't understand the concept of it mm. and it will shock you that a lot of women don't agree with the concept of it as well mm -hmm. you know you have women who tell you um w one time i said something and i said it it was a compliment 
<laughs> you know, and I was shocked that people didn't get it. I said, because I'm, I'm not married, so I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would have said, oh, so where is what you're talking about? You're a marriage counselor, what's your business? Mm -hmm. You get, I said, marriage is not an achievement, it's a commitment. So mm -hmm. I was basically hailing the women who understand that because I, I was having a conversation with a friend and she was telling me a lot of things. And the so women come, yeah. had a go at me like, shut up, how dare you? And I'm like, wow. Whoa. It's a compliment. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yes, I totally agree that when men talk about things like this, other women will listen to, mm. not just the men. Because most times we don't listen to ourselves. Mm, we don't. No, we don't. Our biggest critics. Mm. Um, okay, so talking about maternity leave now, I remember when I first started working at a particular organization and one of the policies there was you can't get pregnant within the first year of um, being employed. And then I got pregnant and I told one of my colleagues, so this wasn't in the organization, and she freaked out, ah, you're going to get sacked. And this was like a dream job. Ah, you're going to get sacked. Ah, you're not supposed to get pregnant. And I was so scared. Eventually, I lost the baby. Oh, and so I didn't even that. take time to just go and relax. relax. In fact, we had a strategy session. I was still going through the process of when you, know, when, you, when you lose a baby. And I went for that strategy session. And thankfully, two or three months later, I got pregnant again. Mm -hmm. And thank God I have a, the, my daughter now. Yeah. And when, so it was still within that one year. And the organization was fine with it when they found out that I was pregnant. So imagine I stressed myself the first time and eventually even lost the baby. So in terms of maternity leave, we found that a lot of companies do not give sufficient maternity leave. Mm -hmm. They sometimes don't understand. Mm -hmm. Women like myself are sometimes scared mm -hmm. to actually um, get pregnant yeah. because, oh yeah, pregnant again. You would, I mean, a particular mm -hmm. instance, I know of someone who was skipped promotion a couple of times because she got pregnant about two to three times. Do you mm -hmm. think this is fair? Is there something we can change? Well, uh, for me, I don't think it's fair because the, the, a man never gets pregnant. Mm -hmm. So he can as well achieve his dreams and, you know, those goals he has set for, his, for himself and give himself a timeline and he achieves everything. But for a woman, you know, we have to at some point take a break and say, okay, we focus on family. And, but I guess that, that's what makes us hum superhuman. But at the same time, we have, to, people have to respect that we are individuals who have the same goals and the same dreams. So we should also have that opportunity mm. given to us. Mm. So yes, I don't think it's fair. I think that women, if, if, you, if you ask me, don't tell anybody I told you. <laughs> I think that once a woman gets pregnant, her husband should be giving maternity leave too. You know, I was just about to say that. In, I think it's, is it um, Finland or Sweden? I'm not sure. One of those countries. They actually give, so they give the women a year and a half maternity leave. I mean, that's long. I remember I had a Swedish, it was Sweden, a Swedish colleague who said yeah. his sister... Mm -hmm. had been on, I think, about four years or four and a half years maternity because she yeah. just kept getting pregnant back to back. So one and a half years. But then the funniest thing was the man gets two, sorry, six months paid paternity leave. I think it's important. Even the, the same YouTube video I was watching, he was talking about how um, men, when men are involved in childcare or house chores as well, the children become healthier, the women yeah. are healthier, men yeah. are healthier as yeah. well. So yeah. I think it's something we need to, even Sheryl Sandberg of yeah. Facebook talks about it in her book, yeah. leaning about, you know, it's been important for the man to be involved. Yeah. So I think we should, don't you yeah, think so? I think so. I Paternity think, leave. Yeah, and I think <laughs> more, you know, women should get more out of their maternity leave as well. Mm. We should get more. I think so. Um, okay, so sexual harassment. On <laughs> Twitter recently, I don't know if you heard, something was trending where a young woman um, applied for a job on an online portal and she got a response saying for sex, they would give her, she would get an interview. So this Is was that trending. Is a real job? Apparently. Like, she's sure it was a real job? Because you have a lot of corner... <laughs> An artist mm. everywhere now, so yeah. But I, I think, is that? Do you think it's something that's prevalent? Because even in in some certain industries, like financial industries, you find that a lot of women have all these targets, and they have to go out there. Same with the men; they go out, have targets as well. But these women sometimes have to sell themselves short because they want 
these opportunities yeah. that the men have. No, the, the, the thing, the, the, what I would say about that is, it, it's unfortunately women blame the job, but it's really not the job; it's your principles. Because mm. there are people who are also principled and try as much as possible to get there as well. Because even guys to have marketing targets that they have to meet mm -hmm. and. I don't think they go about trying that. Yeah, it's easy for anyone to say they don't get sexually harassed. But, you know, now that you have people swinging both ways and things <laughs> like that, I'm sure there's some, some type of harassment that mm. comes to them. So yeah. I, I don't think that um, that should be an excuse for any woman to, mm. to um, lower her standards because it's really about your principles. Mm. But that being said, I also know that it's obtainable. Yes, I know that people get harassed sexually, especially women. Now, that's where lawmakers come to play. Mm -hmm. That's where policies are put in place. Because if, you know, there, there should be laws that protect women that are working, employed women mm -hmm. in, in the corporate sector, whatever sector it is. There should be laws that protect them. So if things like this happen, I should be able to report my boss I'm sorry, you're my boss, but you crossed oh, the but line. I mean, just imagine a woman going to report to her, her boss. Do I you do. think, would, would, this, would anything be done? But that's the problem. The, the problem we have in this country is that it's not like some of these laws are not there. But because we, there's nobody accountable, there's nobody to hold, you know, to ransom. There's nobody to say, okay, if, let's make sure that this is done the right way. You understand? And, and that's where the problem is. So the problem is not just about the laws and the policies. It's holding the policy makers to ransom. Mm. So even organizations understand that, okay, if you have a strong, and there's a strong channel, and there's, you know, there are, there are strong organizations that are respected, not just because, oh, it's, there's an NGO or anything like that. No. You know, powerful organizations that have pe women at the top, and men especially at the top. Mm -hmm. that uphold you know and have principles and they have values and then you say okay and people see that this thing is working you'll find out that companies will respect themselves mm -hmm. you understand our problem is not that these things are not there it's just that there's nobody to hold accountable, accountable. Mm -hmm. interesting how can we change the mindsets of people to see that yes we still keep culture as part of us we can't really change our culture but in terms of making sure we are seen as I mean, we're not equal anyway. We're not saying we want to be men, but we're just saying treat us as respectable. Yeah. Yeah. First, I think that one of the ways we can change it is we have a conscience. We know what is good and what is evil, right? Mm -hmm. So you know what you would want Waji to do that is good to you. So if they understand that, I'm talking about culture now, you understand? If they understand that, it will go a long way to treating people right, you know. Um, there's this uh, research that was done l lately um, by the Purple organization that I'm a part of. And they went into homes and they were asking people about how they would feel if a woman and, you know, like a couple shared the same responsibility in homes. And they went to traditional rulers and all of that. And they asked one of the Yobas, Do, will you ever let a woman become an Oba? in mm. your town and strangely enough he said yes of course there were some of them that said never. that's never <laughs> going to happen but you see the thing it's it's not just about him saying yes it's the concept of why he said yes you understand you don't know it's what he was thinking so that sort of person understands you, you know that yes culture is about upholding traditional um beliefs and all of that not necessarily you know native and but at the same time you know that culture doesn't mean that what, is what, what should be given to you shouldn't be given to you b because you're a woman mm. and because I'm a man, you know, that sort of thing. So I feel that's one of the first ways that we can deal with it. Can we talk about um, choice? Mm. Because choice is a big factor. It's a big issue. So many women don't seem to have a choice. But you... You made a choice, and you're a proud mother of a beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. um, what makes you different? What, what made it different for you? I think what made it different was my support system, because mm. I was really young, you know. And um, my mom, 
um, every I'm sure every girl is close to her mother, you know. So I'm pretty close to my mom, but I was actually shocked at my mom's reaction because I remember I came back home and I, it was in the morning and uh, we we just woke up. She woke us up for morning devotion, and after morning devotion, I told her I wanted to talk to her, and she said, "Okay." I sat her down and I said, "Mom, this is the situation, and this is my decision." And she looked at me and said, "Okay." And she never spoke about it till I think I turned 25, which is like 10 years later. <laughs> you know, she never really talked about it. So I feel that sometimes, yeah, we make choices that don't necessarily, they are probably not the right choices. But your support system, can, it, it helps you, you know, tr retrace and pull back evaluate and then know how to correct your wrong and still be the person you want to be you know so I, I think that that's how I was able to make my own choice continuously after having my daughter and staying on course and making sure that you know I didn't let that affect me after a while I went back to school and all of that yeah but you are lucky and blessed to have a support system now a lot of women do not have that support system yeah can you tell us about the YJ safe house Okay, YJ Safe House is a shelter, but it, you know why I chose. Well, that's why I chose the name. Not necessarily a shelter where people stay and all of that, but because you know, I wanted something that will help me connect to the things that I have faith in and the things I believe in, um, like education. I'm one of the. I really, really. I, I have sat down with a lot of people to find out that that as easy as it is is not as available to them as you would think you know this is education yes education and then i'm very passionate about the girl child and so many of that because you know i'm from a semi-violent home my dad used to mm. beat my mom at some point mm. before she left you know and so I, I i was in the middle of all of that now we quarterly partner with different ngos to help spread the word of or, you know whatever their causes and one of the reasons why is because of all these things that I'm passionate about I can't do it alone you know and I also know that I don't have I, yes God yes I'm wealthy amen, amen. but <laughs> I, I may not be able to bring out money all the time to say okay you go to school or you do this or mm. you do that so I already understand that I'm a brand that can help you mm. do that so I tell you, partner with me. Let's go and meet the people that can help. Mm. So that's what YG Safe House does. Wow. What other projects are you involved in? Um, right now, there's a project I'm involved in called African Woman. Okay. And one of the reasons why is because of the things I learned from the One Campaign and working with Popo. Okay. Which, um, for the One Campaign, the campaign was Poverty Sexist. And that's when I found out about the, the research I told you about, the Egyptian woman who had to disguise as a man, mm. and how probably 10 to 12% of the girl child in sub-Saharan Africa end up going to primary school. I'm not even talking about secondary, secondary school. school. Wow. So I decided that you know, we, we have very intelligent young girls, but they don't have the funding to go to school. So I said, you know what, well, let me start with Nigeria first. And okay. by the grace of God, we expand. But well, let's take five girls to, through university, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, depending on whatever you want to study, and we'll back you up. So if people want to contact you, if they want to support... There's a YJ Safe House um, website, okay. yjsafehouse.org. Okay, the yeah. okay, and you can also get information on the African woman yes, there um, as well. Yeah. Okay, wow, interesting. So what's next for Ajay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything is next. I just became the judge for The Voice okay. Nigeria. Mm. So um, I'm, that's what we're doing now because we're shooting 17 weeks, so we're shooting um, a lot. I'm working on my album with Kobam Sasukwa. Okay, we had him on the show. Oh yeah, so he's the producer of the album. He's amazing. amazing so yeah, yeah. We, so that's what I'm doing as well. And then I plan to tour this year. Okay. So I'm touring with the African Woman concept because I also want to be able to go to different universities in Nigeria and Africa and then have a one-on-one -on -one talk with young girls. So yeah, that's all we're doing. Mm, that's amazing. Wow, you're doing a lot. Well, <laughs> I want more. <laughs> Awesome. But yeah. you're changing lives, you're impacting people, and 
I mean, that's that's what living is all about, yes, helping it is. someone else. Yes, definitely. Yeah, but you know, just as you said that, I am. I was in LA last year, and I went to a big record label to okay. see if they would shine their light on my face. Mm. So um, I was having a conversation with the CEO, and he said something to me, and for me it was strange because I never heard it from anyone else. Yeah, maybe in passing, but coming from someone who's so accomplished, and he has, you know, the likes of Katy Perry and all these people did, you know as a part of their label and all of that and he said for him every time he does it he's high that's how he put it i get my high from knowing that i was able to add value to you and mm. i was like hmm, okay well maybe i should go do my homework a lot more mm. there's a sense of fulfillment yes that comes mm -hmm. which money can't buy yes Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Raji, for coming on the show. I really you. enjoyed our interview. Too. And Thanks. maybe we'll see you again. Sure, definitely. Awesome. <laughs> Viewers, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. For me, something, has, something that stood out for me was basically the fact that as a woman, when you hear gender equality, um, or rather, when men hear women say gender equality, the first thing they think is, okay, they've come again with their feministic thing. Um, we're not saying that we're... We want to be, we're men, we're not saying that, you know, we're exactly the same. What we're saying is that we have our role, we have our own office, and we want respect. Um, during the break, Raja shared an analogy with me about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all one. However, there's also the Father, there's the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So even with a relationship, a man and wife, you are one and you are seen as one. But yes, it's the woman's duty to be submissive, but it's also the man's duty to respect. So we just want to be treated with respect in our workplaces, in our organizations and our families. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. Until next week, stay blessed.